Aaron Torres with us here right now. Uh, Aaron Torres Sports Podcast, Fox Sports Radio. AT, do you have a favorite um, nostalgic recess game that uh, that you used to play that you haven't played in years? Uh, mine is kickball. That's the one I'd like to play. Does kissing under the bleachers count or no? I'm just That's curious. What you were doing during recess then? No, days. I'm kidding. I, I really wasn't. I wish I could lie and say I was that cool. Now, listen, you know, we all played dodgeball back in the day. It was, you know, it was a simpler time. You know, dodgeball, I'm sure, is probably outlawed in like 48 states by now. But, you know, back when I was a kid, you know, we used to go out to recess, play dodgeball, throw, throw a little rubber ball at other people's heads. Nobody died. There was no lawsuits. It was the good old days, Phil. It was really the good old days, to be perfectly honest. That's right. And now all you're left to do in the in during school recess is to go, go kiss the girls under the bridge, and that's that's about it. No, I think you literally have to stand six feet apart and just not do anything. That's my guess. That's pretty <laughs> much how all all recess is going to go from now until the end of time. Is my that's guess. A, that's a very good point. Recess is just going to be standing around staring at people that are six feet away from you. Sounds like lots of fun. Um, Aaron, this has been a, um, a, a a psychopathic week, and I only say that yep. because. Like every day, there's been a different feeling of whether or not mm-hmm. there's going to be college football. And right now, those of us here in the South are feeling pretty confident that you'll at least get to start the season. But I'll tell you what, all of us here are at least thankful of the way the SEC, ACC, and Big 12 have handled it because they have this wait and see approach. And I can't see any reason why, at least right now, all the conferences that have the money to be able to handle this don't wait and see. Bill, you're not, I mean, I, I, the number of people in Big Ten country, coaches, parents, assistant coaches, players, I mean, I saw this morning, I didn't get a chance to look into it, that the, the parents of Iowa players basically came out with a petition essentially saying exactly what you just said, Bill. So it's not as though this is this universal opinion in the Big Ten that is completely different uh, than the rest of the country. I think most people in the Big Ten were blindsided over the last week. I mean, listen, let's never forget, guys, it was like literally a week and a day ago that the big story in the Big Ten was Ryan Day touting behind the scenes that he was going to put up 100 points on Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. So, you know, that doesn't sound like the kind of guy – that, you know, four or five days later assume that he was going to uh, have his season canceled. And so, yes, Phil, uh, I give Greg Sankey, I think he's kind of the leader of this brigade, so much credit for just being patient. He even said on Tuesday when the Big Ten made their decision, I don't know if we're going to be able to play football, but I'll be darned if I'm going to make a decision right now without even attempting to see if it's at least possible. So, Phil, uh, I totally agree with you, and I can tell you definitively, there are dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of people across the Big Ten footprint that feel the exact same way you do. I tell you what, what it almost feels like, and we've asked the, you this question before about the Power Five separating away from the NCAA and all that. Let, let, let's just throw that idea to bed for a moment here, and let's right mm-hmm. now say that it doesn't feel like you have a Power Five. It feels <laughs> like you have a Power Three that are working not together, but, man, they share the same ethos. Well, yeah, and that, that last part's important. Is that what, what we've learned the last four, five, six weeks, and it's so funny because we heard throughout the offseason the Power Five will move in lockstep. They're going to do it together, and that is not what we've seen at all. And so I don't even know if it's a Power Three as much as it's just there are three conferences that are on the same page at this exact moment, um, and we'll see if something changes, whether it's medical, whether it's whatever – that makes those conferences even separate even further. But, yeah, it was interesting to meet today or the other day, Phil. Somebody asked me about this. You know, does this make it more or less likely the Power Five break off? And I think there's clear separation even within the Power Five. I mean, is, if you're Greg Sankey in the SEC, is the Big Ten, as weird as it sounds, but they've been acting very volatile the last month or so, is that really a conference you want to align yourself with? Uh, the Pac-12 and frankly don't have the financial resources, the financial commitment, uh, the interest level that the SEC does. Is that who you want to align yourself with? So uh, I get why the conversation happened. I'm not saying anybody is idiotic or anything for saying that, but I- I'm with you 100%. As it just feels like there's five individual entities moving on their own, and they're just looking for people who feel the same way that they do uh, so they can press forward in one direction or the other. Speaking to Aaron Torres here on halftime, at so we you talked we talked about the confidence level, like particularly us who down here we're kind of semi confident that everything is should work out the way it should and hopefully get the season kicked off. But if one conference drops out 
and follows the Big Ten and Pac-12's lead, and he's like, you know what, it's too dangerous, whatever it may be. I think that'll change the whole outlook of having a season if one more conference calls it quits before the, before anybody else. You agree with that? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, because it does seem like, you know, I, I mean, listen, I, I'm a believer in, you know, if the SEC really feels that they should press forward, um, then they should. And if people want to say, oh, it's a tainted championship, well, we have tainted championships all the time. I mean, to, you know, college football, the history of college football is written with tainted national championships, right? I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, team was voted here that team was voted there uh even the pre-bcs era we all remember the 2004 auburn team so there's plenty of history written with tainted championships but yeah man i i I do think so that seems to be the sentiment out of all these league offices and it's why every time the sec has a call or the acc or the big 12 has a call i mean yesterday there was an acc president's meeting and it spread like wildfire what does it mean is it important is this going to change things and so I think we are going to be on pins and needles, really, these next – honestly, I hate to say it. I don't want to say next five weeks, but, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to, to, to change between now and September 26th that is going to allow everyone to have a definitive we are going to play. So I hate to say it. I hope I'm wrong, but it feels like we're going to be doing this dance of, you know, we have to watch out, watch out – you know, uh, watch over our backs. I'm sorry, I tripped over my own word there, but watch over our own backs every minute of every day just to kind of make sure that nothing crazy is going on. I want to switch gears just for a second, go to the NBA, and I think me and you both really have enjoyed the NBA bubble that's been going on. Um, and I think when you look at the bubble and the success that it has, other than the Sun, Phoenix Suns going 8-0 and and for some reason not making the playoffs, which still blows my mind, but the overall success of the bubble, and keeping the virus pretty much at a zero the whole time that since they've been there, does that lead more towards that you think college basketball could be getting towards a bubble as we get closer to hopefully a non-conference portion of the season and into conference play? You know, Matt, it's a great question. Um, I'll tell you this. I've, I've talked to all sorts of coaches over the last week that are a proponent of a bubble. I've seen virtually every member of the college basketball media talk about a bubble the part that I'm confused by, guys, and maybe you have a, 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 a something that can either back me up or tell me I'm wrong on this, if we determine that college football isn't safe to play because of liability purposes, I don't understand how that would change in college basketball, even if there was a bubble. At the end of the day, you're still talking about student athletes without a player's union, um, without long-term medical care, uh, playing a sport in a COVID era without a vaccine. And so maybe I'm completely wrong on this. And even Mark Emmert said yesterday he's looking at bubble scenarios. I think the Michigan State, either school president or AD, said the same thing. I've talked to a number of coaches off the record. I know for a fact there's one Power Five conference that has already started putting plans into place as to what a bubble could look like, a city, uh, uh, hotels, all that stuff. I just don't understand how the liability changes. I don't understand how the Big Ten can say, you know, Michigan and Michigan State can't play football because of liability, because of all these heart conditions that we're now all of a sudden worried about. But basketball is okay. So, uh, listen, I'll be honest. I hope I'm wrong on this. I hope we get basketball. But what I've said all along, the best thing that can happen for a college basketball season is for the SEC to figure out a way to play football because I just don't see how those liability issues change. I don't see how the school presidents are any more comfortable playing basketball than they are playing football in this time frame. AT, I trust your opinion. And I feel I hope so. I, I, you, every week. Well, absolutely. You're a well traveled man. You've been all across this great nation. We get to call home. I want to ask your yep. opinion. I had I had an interesting food this week, this past weekend. I came to Oklahoma City, had a wedding to go to, and Phil, Maddie T, pretty much every listener that tunes into ESPN Arkansas has been making fun of me this week. So I want to see if you've ate what I had got last weekend. Have you not ever had sweet, but probably not. But go ahead. <laughs> have you ever had lamb fries? No, I've never even heard of them. I'm not. I'm not going to make fun of you. I've just never heard of no, them. You, okay, no, you'll tell, make, tell, tell you'll, them what the other name for them is. Okay. Have you ever heard of Rocky Mountain oysters? I've heard of them, but I don't know what they are. Phil, go ahead. Would you eat cow testicles, at? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I've heard of this. You know, listen. I'll, I'll say this. So, like, uh, part of my heritage, I'm I'm half Hispanic. I, my, my grandparents were born in Puerto Rico. Uh, all that stuff. So we eat all kinds of weird stuff. We eat cow tongue. I've never had uh, what you just referenced, Phil, um, but I've eaten all sorts of like weird stuff because of cultural reasons. So like, 
You know, I don't know. I, I don't know that I would say no, but I, I I don't know that I would say yes either. I mean, that's such a cop so, out. But it's like saying, it's like saying, are we going to have football this fall? It's like I could see it, <laughs> but I could not see it. It's like the same thing, you know. We need percentages. <laughs> Give me a percentage. Would you eat it? Yeah, that would work a little bit better. If you eat the noodle, I think you can effects, eat it. Okay, how does it going to affect my heart and all that kind of stuff? That's what I need to know. <laughs> Good point. It might be a little tough to go down. Just a little tough to go down. Can we uh, get the Pac-12 medical team to confirm or deny uh, if it's safe for me to eat? Then I'll go. Then I'll press for. It. If, if the if the if the uh, if the president of Michigan signs off on it, then I'll eat it because that guy is worried about everything. I don't think that guy's left his house in about 10 months. So well, hey, the SEC he signs medical off, board, I'll eat it. The SEC medical board says you're fine, so just go ahead and swallow oh, okay. it whole. Yeah, it's just, just easy as that. Appreciate your time, now, Aaron. It's always fun talking right, with guys. you, man. Thanks, Have 18. a great afternoon. Thanks, fellas. You got it. We'll be talking with him again next week. So, so I mean, Hey, he's had cow tongue. I'll give him that. And I have, too. I, I haven't tried that, that before. Later on, I'm going to try to introduce a brand-new segment to the show, um, which we're going to call SmackDown Sucks Down Sweet Meats. Wait, I, say, wait, say that again. SmackDown sucks down sweet meats. Are we trying to do alliterations? I like the alliterations. Are we trying to do alliterations, alliterations on halftime? It's all about alliteration. That's, what I, that's exactly why. So <laughs> that's the end of the show. Make sure you're listening in about an hour, okay? Also, call the Fenceman if you own a business that needs more security or more curb appeal. The Fenceman specializes in custom installations. Been doing it for 40 years. Come over for a quick no obligations quote. The Fenceman, 479-782-3936. The Fenceman is a division of Quantum Property Services.